shall we conquer the world today, my rogue army? My name is Erin Rogoff, and I would like to welcome you all back to my booktube channel. So, for starters, forgive the noise in the background because that's just my dad doing housework. Second, I would like to say that I have put off this video until two days before the new year, so I needed to get this done, so I wanted to record, edit, do all that sort of stuff. So, with that being said, I have seen a bunch of top three favorite books versus top three least favorite books of 2019. And with the 70, 80 plus books I've read this year, I decided to make a video of that myself. Starting with Until Friday Night by Abby Glines, which is book one of the Field Party series. It is a young adult fiction romance novel and it's a book that's popular for teenagers dealing with their first taste of real world problems, like cancer, loss, and relationships. So, with that being said, the series that I have read so far, up to book four, is so good. I have nothing bad to say about the series other than book four, which was Losing the Field. It's kind of like the darkest book in the series, or at least I think that way. And I just wish a TV show was made because the scenery, the real world, real world problems, the connecting characters, everything. It's just so amazing that I love all these transformations in this book. It is incredible. I highly recommend it. I rated it a 5 stars, or at least a 10 out of 5 stars if I can go that high. And then my second favorite book, speaking of getting high, is Crank by Ellen Hopkins. This is a young adult fiction poetry novel, and it's a book that's popular for people who are close to those who have been on drugs or have experienced drug problems in the past. And with this book, um, Ellen Hopkins, her daughter, actually was addicted to drugs at one point. I'm not sure if she's still addicted to drugs or if she's relapsed, but after Ellen Hopkins was dealing with her daughter having problems with drugs, she wrote the Crank trilogy, Crank, Glass, and Fallout, and now she has these incredible books, and I have like six other of her books. I am breezing right through them. I have so much to say about them, but I'm going to save that for another video. And then my third favorite book of this year is Life As We Knew It by Susan Beth Pfeffer. This is a young adult fiction, science fiction, dystopian fiction novel, and it's a book that's a popular read for science fiction fans of the what-if questions. Now, with Life As We Knew It, I actually read the book 10 years ago when I was 12 and in 6th grade, and I even remember my teacher's name from back then. Hi, Miss Judio! I'm making booktube videos now! Anyway, with the Life As We Knew It series, I read it when I was in sixth grade, and then I started writing a short story on how I think life would turn out if Life As We Knew It ended, and the moon was knocked closer to the Earth, and if I think about it now, all of the scientific questions that I got wrong in the short story would be so terrible now, because I live literally two miles away from the beach, and if the moon was knocked closer to the Earth, the oceans would rise and there would be so many tsunamis and earthquakes that my beach town would be swept underwater in two seconds. So if I was living inland, then I would have maybe a better chance of not being drowned. But being that this is an ocean, oceanside town, um, yeah, I'd pretty much drown. And the funny thing is, I live in a beach town, I'm an Aquarius, and I can't swim which is a conundrum in itself, which is actually really funny and surprising for a lot of people. I do not know why. <laughs> there is more background noise because it is raining outside and I'm not sure if my dad is still doing work in the house or whatever, but let's move on to my top three least favorite books of 2019, starting with Oh my gosh. Falls the Shadow by Skip Horak, which is part of the Warmer Collection. And I'm not even sure what the genre is, because it could be nonfiction, it could be fiction, I have no idea. And I didn't even understand the basis of this novel that I got on Amazon for free on my Kindle. And if you want to sponsor me Amazon, please let me know. Anyway, with this book, I was so confused as I was reading it. Like, I felt like one of those readers who just reads words and doesn't see anything visually. I mean, use your imagination. Get this book that's 
horrible and then make it better. I mean, it might prove a point for something environmental and geologically or scientifically or whatever, but it is still not necessarily a good read, in my own personal opinion. If you enjoyed the novella, I'm proud of you. If you didn't enjoy the novella, I'm proud of you still. Second least favorite book of the entire year is The Elite by Kira Cass. Please do not hate me for this one. Not everyone has the same opinions as you do. This is a young adult fiction romance novel with a dystopian fiction feel, and it's about America Singer and Maxim Shreev. Their relationship is rising to more romantic levels, and with this book, I absolutely hated uh, what's her name? Celeste. I hated Celeste. She was just this horrible female dog person. I hated her. And just the fact that she would rip off the sleeve of America's red dress, it was like so horrible. But I actually read the third book afterwards. And if she wasn't, I mean, if, she, yeah, if she wasn't killed in the third book and America like tattled on her in the second book, it would have been America who died in the third book instead of Celeste. If that makes any sense, of course. But I just, I just didn't like the book at all. I don't understand the appeal of the second book, but the third and fourth book are fantastic. I love those to death, but they are not favorites. And then the third book of the year that is my least favorite. I might get a lot of hate for this, but it is Mockingjay by Suzanne Collins. This is a young adult fiction dystopian romance novel, and it's book three of the Hunger Games series, and I feel like I'm dissing my former best friend because of this. Not the one who was like all, all messed up, but my former best friend from middle school. Because when the Hunger Games series came out, she was so obsessed with the series, she tried to get me reading it. I read part of the first book and I wasn't into it. And at that point in my life, I was going through this weird phase where I would not read a book that anyone else heard of. So if somebody never heard of The Geography of Lost Things by Jessica Brody, I would have read that. But if somebody a bunch of people heard of The Raven Boys by Maggie Stiefvater, I would never have read that. But with the, with the Hunger Games series, I was like, I don't understand the appeal. Then I see the movies and I get into it. Then ten years later, I actually finished reading the entire series. And just because I didn't like the book series and loved the movie series, please don't hate me for that. And as for my former best friend, um... Her name is Julia Real. Go visit her channel. I'll leave a link for that in the description. Um, I rather enjoyed the first book. The second book was okay, but the third book, Mockingjay, was just not my cup of tea. So if you enjoyed these books, I'm happy for you. If you didn't enjoy these books, I'm still happy for you. Please respect all opinions in this video, so if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button to show some support. Subscribe to my booktube channel to get more videos like this, and have a great day, everyone.